dance for the people. Okay, there's no need to hit yourself. Okay, come on, bud. That's what happens when you hit yourself, so please stop. Okay, but are you Batman or are you something else? Batman. Really? Because that's not like the Batman I've seen. It's Lego Batman. Oh, Lego Batman. So it's a little different. You having trouble with your mask because you keep moving so much? Uh -huh. oh, okay. Perfect. Alright, so we're here with Lego Batman Blaze who is just full on crazy. <laughs> Basically since the end of the last one until now. We're all a little fried. Uh, but we are making scones today. And one of our neighbors asked us if we would make blueberry scones. So we're gonna show you how to turn a regular scone into a blueberry scone. Now, it's pretty rare that I say anything I make is regular. Usually I say original. So that just shows you how fried I am. I don't like saying that my food is regular. It makes me feel weird. All right, Lego Batman. We have all of our dry, all of our wet, we're gonna cut our fat into our dry. What mixing method was that? Muffin method. Nope, not even close. Muffin method? Nope, that's the answer you just gave me. You have three options, you've already used one. What are the other two? Muffin method. No, nope, it is the biscuit method. So, just like when we made biscuits, we're gonna cut our fat into this. What was that handy little thing that we did with the fat when we made our biscuits, do you remember? You don't remember? We grated it in, <gasps> super easy. So I have my butter in the freezer just to make sure it's easier to grate. Usually I have a ton of soft butter and a decent amount of cold butter, but today I realized, oh my gosh, I only have soft butter. So we chucked it in the freezer for about 15 minutes and it's fine. Now to show you again how to use your scale, I have all of my dry ingredients in this bowl on the scale. I turn it on, it tells me I'm at zero grams. So then I can pick up my butter and I can grate in as much as I need. We're grating and grating and grating. I'm getting up to 155 grams. Right? It's a lot of butter. A lot of super delicious butter. Butter! Okay, Lego Batman. Do you like butter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, why is it looking like pasta now? Well, that's just because we've cut it. We've already got it cut down. Now you can tell I'm getting to the soft part of the butter because I didn't realize that it was soft until just a few minutes ago. As long as we get to 155, we're good. This will also help because it does not have to be cold for it to work. It's just nice to work with fats that are cold because they are less dirty, less sticky, less of an issue. Now, what was our next step, Lego Batman Fly? Um, well, you put in your fingers under the grater. Yeah. So it might, it might have grated your it might have. So Lego Batman is talking about grater safety, which is an excellent point, Lego Batman. But I use it on the bottom of the graters. Usually the inside or the bottom of a grater is very, very safe. All right? But you're not quite there yet as Blaze, the individual, so good looking out. Now remember this part, Batman Blaze, we're going to cut our fat down. Now in biscuits, we left it in what people generally term pea-sized, but it's usually pretty substantial chunks, all the way up to the size of a full-grown blackberry or something like that. With scones, we want it pretty fine. You do not have to do this by hand. You could do it in a machine, like a food processor or a stand mixer. Use the paddle attachment on a stand mixer and just mix it until it is paddle, resembling paddle, paddle. sawdust. And if you were doing it in the food processor, just pulse it a couple times until you're satisfied. Now in here we have all the things that you would expect, flour, baking powder, sugar, and salt. If and you, butter. And butter. If you wanted to add any seasonings, you certainly could as long as they're dry. If you want to add particulates, like we're going to add blueberries, that comes later. But what you can see is this is a very, very fine mix. It starts to clump together and you'll see a slight color change with the amount of fat that goes like, in there. Can I feel it? Of course. It feels squishy. Y yeah, it does squishy feel... Squishy and soft. Squishy and soft. All right. So to that, we will add the recipe calls for creme fraiche. Creme fraiche is obviously a little tricky to come by in this country, so you can definitely use sour cream, or of course you can make your own creme fraiche. You can buy creme fraiche at some places, but as long as we get something that is a cultured dairy product, of course you can use any of the vegan substitutes that you like. What about sour cream? We 
we are using sour cream. Wait. That's what I just said. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to mix and mix and mix. Batman Blaze, why don't you start us off with our joke? What is Batman's favorite part of a joke? What is Batman's favorite part of a joke? I don't know. What is it? The punchline. Do you want to tell it again? No. Do you, do you really want to? Remember, you're supposed to punch when you say punchline. I know, except I don't want to. Oh, of course. We're in full defiance mode these days. It's so great. All right. So we're mixing in our sour cream. You're going to see it's not going to do a whole lot. Uh, this is where mixing it with hand becomes a little trickier, but it will give you a very, very light flaky pastry in the end. We may have to come in and kind of clump it together by hand, giving it what's gently referred to as a frisage yes place. Um, when will we do the other joke? We will do the other joke in a second, buddy. Right now we're talking about making these delicious scones. Now you'll see some scone recipes that very closely resemble a biscuit in the fact that they have a huge amount of moisture. This one does not. This is more along the lines of what I have been taught is an English biscuit or scone. Uh, I have a lot of English friends these days who I hope will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but it is typically a little drier and a little cakier than it is more like the American Southern style biscuit. Yes, I hear you. All right, so now we have something that with a little bit of work is actually a dough. It's still going to be pretty light. It's not going to come together fully because there's not a ton of moisture in it. Now hopefully we remember this trick also. If we take our plastic wrap, this way we don't have to flour the surface of our counter. We can just kind of plop that on there. Make sure it stays mostly together. It doesn't have to be super, super uniform. And what we will do is we will bring it up together. Question coming in, do we have to use pastry flour? Excellent question. So pastry flour, hopefully you've learned through this process, is really just a lower protein flour than all purpose can flour. I it? Sure. Just try and keep it in the thing, that's kind of important. Pastry flour is a lower protein flour than all purpose flour, and so by doing that you'll get a much more tender and as I referenced, cakier scone in the end. If all you have is all purpose flour, just combine their weights. I think that's good, bud. So 375 and you will have more than enough, right? Of course, by now, hopefully we've learned almost all of the wheat flours are interchangeable according to what we want them to do. If I want these to be really, really tough and strong, kind of like our southern style biscuits, I can even go as high as bread flour in protein content. Now I will roll it. We still have to add our blueberries and you're going to see why I'm rolling it first here in a second. Today we'll be using frozen blueberries. It's never a bad idea to use frozen, especially if you can find what's called IQF. Batman Blaze, do you have any idea what IQF stands for when it comes to frozen blueberries? Okay, you think. Wait, how about um, my Batman mask gives me some ideas? Okay. Okay, that's. It's taking a long time for these ideas, Batman Blaze. I obviously don't know. Obviously, you don't. IQF stands for Individual Quick Frozen. What that means is these fruits and vegetables, when they are IQF, are typically picked at the height of their freshness and they are frozen almost instantly with special science and whatever, I don't really get it, but super, super fast. It locks in everything so you get honestly the best fruit pretty much year round. They need to stay frozen as long as possible. So here we are gonna go with our frozen blueberries and we're just gonna kind of dot them in, right? Go ahead, help me. Okay. Help me, help them in the dough. Careful. Yeah, that's because they're individual quick frozen, silly. But this way we can say, oh, there's a whole lot of blueberries in there. Yeah, blueberries. Yeah, blueberries. Now, again, if you wanted to add some other things, I still have some currants left over from when we did our uh, hot cross buns. I would love to put some currants with these blueberries, but I already told you our neighbor requested blueberries, so I don't want to throw them a curveball. Sometimes people don't like when you get extra chefy when they've asked for one thing and you give them something similar but not quite what they wanted. All right, and you can see Batman Blaze is loving just shoving this in there since we don't really pop a lot of okay Wait. bubble wrap or anything. It's nice to go the opposite Wait. way. Maybe I should transform so I can like just smash it in. I please. don't think we need to smash it, smash it, bud. And okay, I don't know if we can capture your transformations on film. Everybody might be too scared. Okay. There we are. 
Now, <laughs> blueberries. Yeah, blueberries. Now, don't be surprised with IQF fruits that your hands will discolor. That's totally fine. Obviously, it's just the ice crystals melting on your hands. I'm going to rinse my hands off real fast. Blaze, can you tell us our second joke, please? Okay. Why did the pastry chef poison his parakeets? Oh, my goodness. Why did the pastry chef poison his parakeets? It's kind of a morbid joke. Here's the very sad part. To kill two birds with one scone. Oh, to kill two birds with one scone. Oh, okay, I get it. So I'm going to fold this in thirds. How does that make sense? Because there's a saying, kill two birds with one stone, that comes from a long, long time ago. And scone just rhymes with stone. Anyway, so we're going to laminate it. It won't laminate nearly as much as it did with our biscuits, because again, this is much softer, much more cake-like. But it will still add a nice little texture difference. We'll throw a couple blueberries in here. Ready for smash? We're good, but because I'm about to fold this over. Ah! We'll fold this on. It's like a giant tsunami wave to the blueberries. Yep, it's like a giant tsunami wave to the blueberries. That's exactly how I would have described it. Excellent job, Blaze. I'm going to create a nice little envelope here by folding all the edges over and turning it under Wait, itself. Are we going to mail this? We are not going to mail this, but we could. All right, and then we're going to roll it. That way we get all of the extra air out, and we can make sure that it's fully hydrated, and we can start to shape it. Now, in America, you almost always see scones that are triangular. I'm going to keep going with that because that's what I assume our neighbor would like, but in other countries, it is very, very common for scones just to be round, like our southern-style biscuits are. Right now, this can be made days ahead of time, wrapped just like this, especially if you rolled it like that. The plastic wrap will give it what's called a synthetic skin, right? It's pretty airtight as it is, and you can leave it in your fridge or freezer for a long time. So you can make this the night before, wake up in the morning, portion it, and bake it. Obviously, we're doing a show, so we're going to go ahead and portion it now. But you can chill it overnight, up to a week, or of course, you can freeze it for just about ever. All right? So, here are my scones. Wait, should I freeze the blueberries again? Because I just transformed into a character called Ice because he's frozen. You go for it. You can freeze those with your magical ice powers that none of us can see. Do it, buddy. I'm gonna put some more blueberries in the top because why not? We have them, right? When somebody asks for something blueberry, I like to make sure they get plenty of them. Those of you who saw the movie Casino, I'm sure you remember where Joe Pesci says he wants the exact number of blueberries in every single muffin. And you'd be surprised how many times I've heard that in the professional kitchen and I just kind of laugh. But obviously somebody somewhere takes it very seriously. So, what? Okay, transform in just regular blaze, bud. That'd be super helpful right now. Uh, well, I have to wait until... Okay, so we're just going to cut these scones, yeah. right? So again, we're going to make them mostly triangular. Don't be afraid to cut through the fruits. And what you'll see is it's a delicate pastry, but we can still pick it up. Lots and lots of fruit in there. Oh. We'll arrange it. Our biscuits... Yeah. Thank you, bud. Our biscuits raised pretty much exactly straight up. These are still going to spread a little bit because of the sugar and the moisture from the blueberries. So do space them a little bit apart, but we don't need to like have huge amounts of space. Plus if they run together, it's almost like a pull apart roll. Them running together will help keep the insides very soft. We bake these, similar to biscuits, hot. We still want to generate a decent amount of steam. So we will bake these at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You can even go all the way up to 450 if you're in a hurry. Just keep an eye on them. Now, if you wanted to make a savory scone and have bacon and cheddar and chives, you could definitely do that. As usual, just make sure that your meats or anything that is hazardous is fully cooked before it goes in here. So, what do you think, Batman Blaze? Looks pretty good, huh? Do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay, so you're seeing me deal with a little bit of tenderness trying to pick these up. It's because they're warm. If they were cold, like if you had refrigerated them overnight, they would come right off of there. I have to practice a little bit of extra caution because the dough is still pretty warm. And always make sure that you check to make sure no plastic wrap is going through. Otherwise, we will bake these. They need to cool on the pan pretty much all the way. Alternatively, when they come out of the oven, you can brush them with a thin royal icing or like a donut style glaze or something like that. And it will help seal in all the moisture. And because they're super hot, it'll glaze almost perfectly even. You can add vanilla beans or liquor or anything you want to that glaze just to give you another shot at flavoring. So I'm going to get this going. We are going to say 
Thursday, for those of you who don't know, tell them Batman Place. Thursday is our last show. Why wow, you sound so excited about that? Thursday will be our last show. We will be showing you how to make birthday cake. Things are just getting a little out of hand around here, and school's coming to a close. So we're going to push pause on this. We may intermittently pop up through summer if we feel so inspired. But we've had a lot of fun, right, buddy? Mm -hmm. Right, we're not going to shed any tears. We'll do that on Thursday. But is there anything you want to say to everybody in case Thursday's super crazy? The show made you famous. You should thank all of your fans. Okay. Uh, then I guess we will see you guys on Thursday. Look out for the picture of these when they come out of the oven. And thank you, everybody.